As you can tell, we are clearly hooked on becoming official walleye anglers. So before continuing our fishing adventure, we've decided to increase our walleye smarts by visiting our local fisheries biologist. I think my net is all set and ready to go. You think that's a net? This is a net. <gasps> well, we're ready to become fish biologists now. Well, you know nets are pretty low tech gear. Let's talk about something a little bit higher up the food chain. So this piece of equipment is one of the oldest pieces of equipment used in limnology. What do you guys think this is for? It looks like it might be used for hypnotism. <laughs> Could be. Maybe. Well, yesterday when you were walleye fishing, what was the, one of the main things you noticed about those fish? They're not really much of a fighter. What about their anatomy? Something around their oh, head? Teeth. Teeth, what else? Um, their gills. How about their eyes? They have really big eyes. They yeah. do. Yes, they have you really big eyes. Where it's kind of glazed over, kind of, kind of reflective called the taffetum lucidum. So they are visual predators for the most part and their eyesight is very important. So being that their eyesight is very important, water clarity is important to walleye. So the Secchi disc allows us to have a gauge of how clear or turbid water is. So this piece of equipment is actually lowered down into the water. As it gets lower in the water column, the black and the white will become less distinctive. You can't dis discriminate between the two colors and that gives you an idea or something to record about how turbid the water is or how good water clarity you have where you are. I'm more of a catch em guy. What do you got? So, you want to be the catch em guy. All righty, let's catch em, except you're going to do all the work. So this is what's referred to as a seine. This is a small net used probably in a stream situation, all, in, in small lakes also, probably water less than four or five feet deep. So what you want to do is each individual gets on a side of the net, you're going to give it a tilt, the water's gonna keep your floats up high on the surface. Mm. There are weights on the bottom. There you go, get in there. You guys wanna to go to work, you're gonna to go to work. <laughs> so you, you walk slowly forward, you're gonna tap bottom. Stay spread out, tap bottom. When you get to the end of your sampling run, you wanna lift straight up on the net, get it up, back up. You have a person here supporting it. Any fish that you may catch is here in the middle of the net. Just reach in, take your fish out, put them in buckets for your length, weight measurements, or however you're gonna sample. So this is just a very small example of the kind of nets that we use when we're out sampling fish. It's a good thing you're here to try to catch these walleye now. These walleye have just spawned in the Saginaw River. They are what's referred to as being post-spawn. When those fish are post-spawn, they really have the feed bag on. They're trying to put that weight back on their body that they've used up during the spawning process. So you're here for a great time of the year to catch them. You know, this biology stuff is really cool. I want to go down another and see what else I can find. While this piece of equipment is for rent and it would make one heck of a Halloween costume, that's not what it's used for. So this is called a Hess sampler. So you have the netting on, bo on both sides, which allows current to flow through. So you face this up into the current. You give it a good shake to kind of disturb anything that's on the bottom, any rock, cobble, or stone. As water flows through, anything that's kicked up off those rocks flows through. It's collected here at the end. This screws off here and you can dump your samples into a pan for uh, identification and counting and see what kind of microorganisms you have in your site you're on. All of this itty bitty stuff is cool, but we're here for the walleye. Well, you have to remember that, uh, you know, these itty bitty organisms, as you call them, form the base of the food web. Uh, and when that base of the food web is disturbed, it affects everything above it. Uh, it's not just walleye. So you have to understand that they are part of a food web. They are at the top. They're one of the apex predators here in the Great Lakes. Uh, but there are other things that are very important to their survival and to, into, their, into how well they do. Uh, and those will occur at the lower levels of the food web from your primary producers that are kind of fueled by the nutrients that come into the system up to your zooplankton and then prey fish from there that are then fed on by your larger fish. So if something is not right or correct at lower levels of the food web, there are issues with the entire ecosystem. And that will trickle up to people and also the terrestrial ecosystem also. So those little things are more important than you think. <laughs> we want some fish. Who are you gonna call? Fish Busters! <laughs> oh my goodness, what are you doing? One of the main rules of science is never to touch a piece of equipment if you don't know what it is. Yeah. This, my man, is a backpack shocker. This is not a proton pack, so back off, man. I'm a scientist. 
This is actually used to shock fish. You don't want to ever touch this button here because if you touch it, you can have ah! <laughs> No worry, there's no battery in it. I'm sorry about that. But I just want to give you an example of the type of things that can happen when you mess with equipment that you're not familiar with. So this is used to generate a current that's transmitted into the water through the electrode here. So as you walk, it's generating a current. You're just winding. And what happens is, as this passes by a fish, a current submitted, it actually gives them a jolt, sends them in a level four sedation. They're immobile. You can just walk right on up and net them. You know, take your measurements, take scale samples, do what you're gonna do to, to, to kind of take a look at their biology. You put them in an oxygenated tank for their recovery. After a while, when they re regain equilibrium, which means they're able to sit upright on their own, then you then can release them back into the stream. There's no harm, no foul. They're no worse for the wear. They're in just as good a shape, shape as they were if you handled them properly before they took that shot. I'm not too cool with all that electricity. I think I'm gonna stick to bottom sampling. Well, you have to remember, it's just a tool to be used as part of the sampling. Uh, it's not a lot of electricity. It probably would not kill you. I have been shocked. Uh, I will say accidents do happen. I had a hole in the glove and didn't realize it. So I took a, a little bit of a jolt. But then again, I am twice your size. It could be pretty bad for you. No way. No, thank you. Oh. You got something with a little less electricity? Uh, some of the coolest work that's being done now in the Great Lakes is acoustic telemetry. So this is a V7 transmitter. This is surgically implanted into the body cavity of a fish, a juvenile walleye, maybe six to 10 inches long. They're let go. This will actually send out a 69 kilohertz uh, signal. It's called pinging, and that will help give you uh, an idea of location. So what happens is that ping will be picked up by several receivers and then that fish's location can be triangulated between those three receivers. So this is done with, you know, a couple of hundred fish a year in the Great Lakes. So this is cutting edge technology, which is really opening the eyes of scientists as to how far, not just walleye, but sturgeon, muskie, uh, different types of fish in the Great Lakes uh, really travel throughout the year. This is like stuff you see in a James Bond movie. I hope my parents don't implant one of these in me. I don't want to get tracked wherever I go. Who knew fish biology could be so cool? It gives you the skills to grow in your environmental awareness and your fishing abilities. If you want to impress the socks off your fishing buddies, contact a fisheries biologist near you, like we did. Or you can school all your friends by checking out the neat aquatic education resources at kidsfishing.us.